we actually opened our thesis with this line. It's, it's a quote from Winston Churchill that, uh, you know, we shape our buildings and our buildings shape us. If real estate isn't important, I don't know what is. We live in it, we work in it, we play in it. We're sitting in it right now. I mean, it is everywhere. It's one of the largest asset classes in the world. It's probably the most significant investment that most people make in their lifetime. It's a part of where we make memories and experiences with our families, with our friends. Most real estate developers find it a fantastic profession because you see the physical results of what you are working on. Real estate is one of the few careers where you can make a long-lasting physical difference to your environment. And so we ought to thoughtfully approach the process that designs, constructs this built environment that we will leave to subsequent generations. Well, as I looked around the country, having been in the business for a long time, there really wasn't another program where somebody could go there and learn the basics of the real estate development business. My department chair, Gary Hack, said he wanted me to meet somebody, Hank Spaulding. And he said Hank had some ideas about uh, potentially a new degree program at MIT. They assigned to me a, a professor by the name of Larry Bacow, and he was 32 years old. And I said, oh my God, this is a pretty young guy. I'm going to depend on for all the academic support. Turned out he was just exceptional. When you say the center for real estate, you expect this, you know, pretty spacious place. It was not that. You open the door, there was one desk and one person. The deadline for our applications was December 31st. At Christmas, I think we had a dozen applications. And by December 31st, we had in excess of 300. I'd say there was a huge amount of excitement uh, when the day approached when the center was going to be officially open for first batch of students. You absolutely felt like you were part of something that was a pioneering effort. We all felt very committed that we wanted this place to be important 20 or 25 years from then. When we started the program, everything was sort of up in the air. But it worked. It worked. <laughs> MIT has many strengths. It is an institution where historically the faculty like to get their hands dirty. There's a strong tradition of the institute and its faculty working collaboratively with industry. It's fundamentally really an engineering school, okay, in the sense that rigorous analytical study of solving problems in the real world. Real estate is exactly that kind of field. It's exactly that kind of application. There was also a recognition that as an institute, we were already touching all the different parts of the development process. We educated planners at MIT to think about how one plans for the evolution of the built environment. We educated architects who design buildings. We educated folks at the Sloan School who were interested in how we financed the nation's infrastructure. Well, you know, real estate actually is the building block of city making, let's face it. It's about building, it's about policy, it's about finance, it's about land. And MIT, being a, a leader in science and technology, has all of these elements that relate to the future of real estate. And we start thinking about health, and we have labs that can do censored walls where you can get your heart rate and your blood pressure monitored without being hooked up. It begins to allow you to think outside the box about the, the use of buildings and the use of space in the future. It makes so much sense for MIT to be studying real estate in a serious way, because it's such a big part of the real world, and MIT is so much about the real world. Curricula are never frozen in time. You learn how to do things better. Technology changes, it allows you to do things in different ways, and, and the curriculum evolved um, right along with it. The real estate business has changed dramatically over the last 25 years. What may have been considered sort of a cowboy business back in the 1960s and 70s has gotten very professional over the last couple of decades. It's been things like David Geltner's transaction-based index or Professor Bill Wheaton's application of econometric modeling to time series real estate data. These are things that were invented here by researchers who now the whole industry is using. We try to cut through all of the specific current comings and goings to understand what are the fundamental principles 
What are the abiding sort of truths? The best part of the experience was interacting with 30 other students that came from different backgrounds in different parts of the world. Most of my classmates are mid-career people with a lot of experience in various sectors, so we could learn from the classmate as well. The thread that runs through it all is the ability to lead. If you want to be the leader of this orchestra, the conductor of this orchestra, how do you do that? I think that the people that come from MIT are more mature, independent thinkers, more curious and open to new ideas. And in that respect, I think probably even MIT underestimates the quality of that resource because there's very, very little of it. I would compare spending a year in the MIT program to five years of real life experience. When we graduated, I felt very confident in my abilities to perform and, and succeed. Bill was sort of the, he was the youngest one in the class, and, and Ken, on the other hand, was the oldest member of the class. He'd had a very successful career in the construction business. The three of us ultimately sort of became a team throughout the entire year, and even while we were in school, talked about maybe down the line we could do something together, and, and ultimately we did. Arcadia, our primary business plan is to develop mixed-use master plan communities. What John and Bill and Arcadia have created here is the, the whole spectrum of living is here. All the choices that any age group or demographic would choose, it's here. You've got to be patient with this. It doesn't happen overnight. It's got to sort of organically evolve and, and find a, a pace of its own in terms of how it develops out. The Beavers on the Bridges, as you see, is a very subtle way for us to kind of express our MIT heritage without being blatant about it. If you look at what we've done over the years, every single piece of everything we've done has been touched by that MIT experience. The Gateway was the largest undertaking that our, our company had ever pursued. It was a $400 million mixed-use development in downtown Salt Lake. It's built on a brownfield, so we were able to eliminate environmental contamination which existed on the site. So it's an exciting project where we feel like we took something that was pretty dilapidated and really recreated an exciting place for people to shop and work and live. I think in real estate, a lot of what you're doing is you're interacting with people. And I think the CRE experience really opened my mind up to a lot of different cultures, people, and ways of doing things that perhaps I hadn't thought about before. What we're really interested in is finding projects that excite us and that we can sort of throw our heart and soul into and that we can feel good about when we wake up in the morning. One of the highlights of the center is its ability to look out and, and foresee the future, if you will, for the real estate industry, and sustainability is a good example of that. And in the past, it's not been something that the market was really willing to pay for, and now the cost of doing a green building is, is much more manageable, and uh, tenants are demanding it. And yet over time, we realize that it's not just about new buildings, it's also about the four and a half million existing commercial buildings in the U.S. What do we do with those? How do we retrofit those buildings to be more cognizant about their energy use and their carbon emissions? I think there's gonna be an increased emphasis on technology. We're learning how to use technology better to manage buildings, to design them, and I think being at MIT, Technology will be an increasing emphasis in the program as we go forward. I'd say looking out over the next 10 or even 25 years, one of the things that real estate is starting to do is to go global. And the truth is where cities are being built, it's not here. It's in Asia. It's in India, the Middle East. And to make it a better built environment than the one that we have created uh, in the Western uh, environment. This is uh, science at its best because a built environment will be there for 30, 50, 100 years, so we are in a way determining what the future of a lot of people will be like. And the Center for Real Estate has a very sharp focus on how to incorporate best practice into the urbanization over the next 100 years. I think it's important looking back to understand that this is a pretty fragile enterprise when it started. We had to persuade lots of people 
that this could happen, but it has succeeded. In some ways, by being the first mover and innovator, I think MIT has never really lost the sense that real estate innovations happens here. It's the day after day execution of all the things that go into making a great real estate professional and the impact that those individuals can have on their communities is what will make the center transformational over time. Our entire business philosophy is based on the pursuit of excellence, which without question evolved from our experiences at MIT and, and our classmates. I would never have guessed uh, 25 years ago that we were going to be uh, sitting here today talking about 25 years, but it's, it's going uh, great guns. It's great that we made it over the 25 years, but the best is still to come.